strength. Um, we talked about the resilient qualities that, that you built that got you through. I mean, if we didn't have resilient strengths, we would not have had a president of the United States for the last four, you know, every president has been an ACOA or an alcoholic for four presidents, I think. I mean, we, these issues have to build strength and character and ingenuity and statutiveness, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is by no means, though we're looking at the damage, we don't want to live in a damage model. And though we're looking at the pain, the idea of looking at it is to process it and move past it. And resilience, uh, we, want to, we want to know the strengths we develop too, alongside the other stuff. So let's put a few of these around. Um, here we go, you want to put some? Independence, creativity, some research by Wolin and Wolin and Emmy Werner have been, oh, that's okay. We've got, uh, have, have uh, Wolin and Wolin identified a lot of resilient strengths in, in this population, the, the attic population, and Emmy Werner did a long-term study. And the, uh, one of the cardinal findings of resilience is that resilient children tend to have one bonded relationship somewhere in their, in their network. They tend to be average or above intelligence. One of their wonderful qualities is, th is that they, they absorb good things from any place. They're little sponges. They'll take good feelings even from a TV set. If it's in the room, they'll absorb it and feel like it's, it's partly for them. They are, have a good way of attracting mentors to them. So re resilient children thrive uh, for a reason, they've got, they've got qualities that help, them, that help them thrive. They use the world. So look around and see, what do you think you developed out of this list? What's one of the strongest things you feel best about developing that got you through? So, a sense about why you, about how you, how you claim this strength. What is it? Well, I'm um, intuitive, and uh, through my resilience, um, first of all came the surrender, which followed with the spirituality, which um, gave me the gift of being intuitive. You know, and it allows me to help others and be able to zone in and you know, feel the emotions they're feeling, to have some compassion, to have empathy, and um, just kind of naturally knowing to do the next right thing, mm -hmm. what's right, you know, and that's a great gift, I, I believe. I was in a career before I went into recovery that had absolutely no creativity in it. And I think I was starved. And in recovery, Quite by accident, I was thrown into another career in education. And the more creative I became, the higher I rose in that career, where I helped others to be creative. And now suddenly, in a third career, uh, at the Lodge, I'm being given this wonderful opportunity to let these creative juices flow in another direction. And it's keeping me up. I'm having a very good time. And I think that's part of the resiliency that I gained in recovery. And it's made me a much stronger person. Well, I'm in creativity because in, in my growing up, I had to keep reinventing the wheel. Um, and I think it turned into uh, an attribute that helps me today in my life to see that there's not just one approach to any kind of an issue or situation. I'm also in creativity. Um, my whole life I've been an artist and a musician. Um, I thought it was the end of me when my musical career started to end. And I, when I found this, the job in counseling, I realized there was a similar skill set. A lot of improvisation, a lot of you know, 
thinking on the fly, and my brain was still working the same. Creativity was really helpful. Can I take the spirituality surrender? Because it gave me a radical trust in the world that I had. Yeah, um, yeah, it's, spirituality surrender has been, uh, it's been, it's, it's been profound, really. It's been growing, it's, it's amazing to me just in, um, in working, the, working the steps, you know, there's so much about the higher power, it's always been, it seems like a struggle. But it really has, I've continued to work the steps, it really has, I've really seen myself change. I've really seen myself become a person who prays. Who, like, who sees prayer as a tool or something I want to continue to do because it because it works. <clears throat> For me, it's interesting. I was just thinking in my worst, addictive, dysfunctional time, I had this. And I think part of the recovery is finding someone who helps you to bring those out. And I'm at creativity because it kind of saved me. I used to draw as a kid and our flute mandolin, banjo, <laughs> and, and this uh, career, as you were saying, is also really creative, so it's an important piece of it. So, we talked about one of the cardinal findings of resilience research is that resilient children have one strong bonded relationship. And I think it might be nice to take a moment to think of someone who you'd like to say thank you to. Whoever feels warmed up to do that. I'd like to thank my dad, Michael, um, thank you for your support. You know, I know for, for many years you were, you were in the shadow, and I was mama's boy. Um, but thank you for your love. Your love. And I'm sorry that it took me a while to, uh, before I could uh, show it to you. And, um, and thank you for um, hanging in there, because I learned so much uh, that I didn't know from you um, after after you'd gone. And uh, I really, you're just a wonderful.